advanced technology and close calls highlight what has been released from a Pentagon report on UFOs. The executive summary was made public today. That's right. Well, there are some things already known about what is and what is not included. George Knapp of Mystery Wire is here to tell us more. Hey, George. Good to see both of you. Uh, this is the long-awaited report here compiled by the UAP task force as directed by Congress, released to the public late on a Friday afternoon, and it consisted of a whopping nine pages. Two of those pages are indexes and one is a cover page, so there wasn't much there there. But anyone who's been paying attention would have known this report was never going to be a tell-all expose, an admission that space aliens are among us, that the Roswell crash happened, or that spaceships have been stashed out near Area 51. The reality is there were two reports. One was a longer classified version given only to Congress, containing sensitive materials that the public may never see, and then the shorter, less definitive summary for the public right here. The report acknowledges the obvious. There could be many explanations for the cases examined by the military. The report included 144 total cases, 80 of those detected on multiple sensors. There were 11 incidents where American warplanes had near mid-air collisions with the unknown objects. There were 18 cases where the objects exhibited unusual flight characteristics. For the most report, that makes the case that we really do not know how to categorize these objects, that we lack information, and mostly that we lack the ability to ever figure them out. That what we need are better sensors, a free exchange of information, and less stigma for service members to report these things. Late today, we got the first comments from former Nevada Senator Harry Reid, who got the ball rolling on UFO studies back in 2007. Senator, so it's finally out, an underwhelming nine pages, at least the public version of the report. What's your initial impressions? Well, the government has acknowledged that they don't know what these unidentified flying objects are. And so when I started talking about this years ago, people made fun of me and uh, even my own staff thought I was crazy in talking about it. But in hindsight, I'm glad I did. Certainly, we are now know that there have been, they have 142 sightings. We know there have been more than that. But it's something that, as far as I'm concerned, this is a preliminary report. And I mean preliminary. There needs to be a tremendous amount of government uh, resources put into this. So we better understand it so, it doesn't, so it's not some kind of a fringe uh, part of what government's doing. They've got to dive into this because we, and the American people are entitled to know what the hell's going on. One possible outcome from this report could be congressional hearings into the UFO mystery. There were two such hearings back in the 60s, but since then, UFOs have been considered too wacky for Congress to touch. George, in your experience in this field, how big of a step toward disclosure is this report? It's not really disclosure. It's one step toward disclosure. What it is is sort of a form of confirmation that we actually have a legitimate mystery in here. This report essentially makes the case that we need a permanent ongoing study. And if we're ever going to figure this out, we've got to assign it to someone, establish a framework for that, make it easier for our military members to report it, and then provide some money to dig into it and figure it out. Certainly. Wow. And George, this is all really interesting. You said that this is a really big day. Where do we go from here? What's the next step? Well, I think we need to put some money into it, establish a permanent study, but already what's happened is a remarkable change that I never saw, thought I would see in my lifetime, all these years of chasing this crazy mystery. Uh, the, the Congress has admitted it's a legitimate mystery. It deserves our attention. They called for the UAP task force to be created. They created it. A report was put together by the Pentagon. The media is interested. They're covering it, that not all of us are totally crazed and out of our <laughs> minds, and that it's a legitimate uh, subject of inquiry. That's a remarkable change change in just a short period of time, and I can't wait to see what happens next. All right. Well, I bet you've got a lot more calls to your radio show in those overnight hours, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and all day long. Yeah. All day long. All yeah. day long. All right. Anything more you'd like to add on it? George. No, I'm just, I'm really excited about it. It's an exciting time that, as I said, I didn't think I'd see. And uh, there's so much more outside this very thin realm that was dug into by the task force of military encounters. There's so many more cases that have not been investigated. And so, and there's a great history. This only looked at cases from the Tic Tac on 2004 through 2021. This has a 74 year history in the modern era and maybe thousands of years more than that to look into. Wow. All Fascinating right. stuff. Yeah, it really is. Thank you so oh, much wow. for being here, George. Sure. We greatly appreciate that.